Hello and welcome back to another Cookie Tech video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you on how you can make your very own automatic audio system. So before we get started, we're going to pick a instance. You can use your very own instance. For my case, I'm going to use the base plate. However, if you already have a game going, you can use your game. So just click on your game. Keep in mind, all source code used in today's tutorial can be found in the description down below. If you have any issues with the script, feel free to head to our forms, also linked down below, and ask there for some help. Okay, so now that we've loaded in, we're going to head over to Starter GUI, and we're going to create a brand new script. This script will handle loading a song, picking a random song, and playing the song. So we can click on Starter GUI, and then we're going to click plus, and then click on local script. I'm going to call this script sound system, however you can call it whatever you want, I just think sound system is quite fitting. Now we're going to have to get the asset IDs of all the songs we want. So I'm going to put dash dash, and this is just a comment so the script isn't affected, it can't read the comments, it can't do anything with that, and we're just going to find a couple of asset IDs. If you don't have any asset IDs or you're looking for songs, head to view, toolbox, mine's on audio by default but you can head to models and then on the drop down you click on audio. Now I'd recommend using this filter button and I'd set the creator to Roblox because Roblox now has a ton of new songs thanks to the new update and then we're going to slide this along to one minute so we know it's a song. Then click on apply. And now, once it loads in, we have those songs, and then I'm just going to get a ton of song IDs, and you can do that by right-clicking, and then clicking copy as an ID, we're going to paste one in here, then I'm going to get another ID, and I'm going to keep pasting them in, making sure to leave a post. If you want, you can use a notepad or something like that, however, I'm just going to use the comment here because it's easier for me. If you want to get the asset ID of some audio you found on the browser version of Roblox, just head to the audio of your choice, in my case it's atmospheric waiting music, and then just look inside of the URL, and before library slash, and after slash atmospheric waiting music, you'll find this number. It's not hard to miss, it's super easy to find, and then just right click on it, and then click copy. And that's how you get the asset ID of a audio in from your browser. Now we're going to head back to Roblox Studio, and then we're going to paste in all of the asset IDs inside of a variable. So it's all well and good having our asset IDs inside of a comment, but right now they're not inside of a table so we can't randomly pick them. So we're going to define a brand new variable called songs. To create a variable you just say local songs and then equals. This will mean that our asset IDs can super easily be picked randomly. So we're going to use our squiggly brackets. For me, they're next to the P, however, if you're on an American keyboard, it may be somewhere else. They look like this. And now I'm going to copy all the asset IDs from above. So if you have somewhere else, also copy them in. And now if I only want one song ID, we can just leave one. However, if we want to add multiple, we'll put a comma. Then we're going to paste our next ID inside. Then we're going to paste the next ID, and then for the final ID, you're going to leave a comma, except you're not going to leave a comma at the end of the final ID. Now we're going to tell our script how many times we've played the song. We can say local times equals zero, and that means we've played the song zero times. So now we have our songs and the amount of times we've played a song, we want to pick a random song. So we're going to create a brand new function called pick random song. We can do that by saying local function load order. We can do this by saying local function pick random song. Now, when you fire functions, they can return a bit of data. And all we need to do is return the random asset ID we picked from this table. So we can return data in a function by saying return. And now we need to pick a random asset ID from the table above. Keep in mind the more IDs you have, the more variety there will be. And to pick a random ID, we're going to head inside of songs. So this is the songs table. And then we're going to use our square bracket. And we're going to say math.random. And then we're going to put one. And it's going to pick a random number in between one and then hashtag songs the number of songs we have inside of our table. So for example, it could pick the first one, 
it could pick the third song, it could pick the fourth song, it could pick the fourth song again, it's completely random. Now that we've got our random song, we want to load our random song into the game. We want to create a folder inside of Workspace where all of our audios will go. So we can click on this plus button up here, we can create a folder, and then we can call this folder Sound System. If you call it a different name, you may need to change some things inside of this script. Now that we've got the sound system, we're going to create a brand new function called load audio. So we're going to say local function load audio and then brackets. And now we need to get the audio ID or the asset ID that we want to load in. So let's drop a line. And now we're going to have to create a brand new audio, which is also a sound instance. And to create an instance is just to like use the plus button and then put in sound. It's very similar to that. So a new instance is essentially doing that, except we're doing that inside of a script. So we're going to create this instance by saying local new audio equals, and then like we were saying, instance.new. So it should look something like that. Now we're going to tell our script how many times. Now we're going to tell our script that we're playing a brand new song again. We can do that by saying times equal times plus one. Make sure you don't use any functions like I did there. And now that will tell our script that we're playing a song again. And now we need to give our sound a unique name. Because at the moment they're pretty unrecognisable to the script. And if we want to destroy and bring in new audios, we don't want all these audios piling up. So we're going to give the new audio we just created a specific name. We can do that by saying new audio dot name equals sound and then we're going to concatenate it with the amount of times we've played the song. So it could be sound 2, sound 5, sound 10. And I'm just going to say dot dot times. And now that, the first time we run it, it will be called sound 1. Once again, don't use that function that I accidentally keep using. Then drop a line. And at the moment, this audio, it's there, but it's not in any of the folders. And we've just created this folder where we want all our audios to be. So we can say new audio dot parent equals game.workspace.soundsystem and if I visualize that for you imagine we don't have a sound we've created the sound and then we're moving the sound inside of the sound system that's what we've done so far now the sound doesn't know exactly what it needs to play so we're going to give it the sound ID that it needs to play and we have these asset IDs and we can use these asset IDs to our benefit. Now we need to make sure that our audio has actually loaded in and we can use a wait for child function. We're going to say local audio instance equals and then game.workspace.soundsystem which is the folder we created colon wait for child and then sound leave a space dot dot times. And now it's gonna wait for the audio. So for example, we just created sound one. We need to make sure that sound one exists. So we're going to wait for it. Now we need to define the sound ID of the audio we just created. So right now it doesn't know what sound to play. We're going to drop a line and we're going to say audio instance dot sound ID equals. And at the moment it also doesn't know that it's her asset ID. So we're going to tell the sound that's a asset ID by saying rbx asset ID colon slash slash then a space dot dot audio ID. Now our sound knows that it's a asset ID and we've also given it the asset ID. Now we're going to return the audio instance we've defined and created above. So we can just say return and then audio instance. All right, great. So now we can pick the random song and we can load the audio in. But finally, we need to make all of these functions fire. Because to fire a function, you need to do something like load audio. But right now, we're not doing that. And we're going to have a specific function called play audio. And we're going to say local function, play audio, then brackets. And then we're going to use the functions above. We're going to say local selected song equals, pick random song, then local new audio equals load audio. And now, as you can see, we can use, because remember how we said pick random song, 
return an asset ID, we've just got the asset ID, we're going to load the audio in using the audio ID we just got, so we're going to use this variable we'd find above, then we're going to play the sound using colon play, and this is a bit of an extra step, it's not required, if you want your audio to be more in the background and not so prime, you can skip this line however if you're like me and you like to have your audio a bit more prime you can say new audio dot volume equals one by default it's on 0 0.5 however you don't have to have this line so i'm going to put a comment in here optional usage only finally we need to detect when the song ends so we can run this function again we can say new audio which is the audio we're now playing dot ended is it going to look like this? Connect. That's not how you spell connect. Connect function. So when the audio ends, new audio, destroy. So now it's not going to pile up. And now we can just run the function again and it will play a random song. So now we're going to head inside of Roblox Studio and we're going to let it play a song. Let's just give it a second to load in. Okay, I can't hear anything at the moment, so it may, yeah, my volumes, let's see if there are any mistakes. No errors. Okay, I think there's a mistake in our script. Oh yeah, there is. So right now, we're not actually playing the play audio function, and that's an issue because now it can't run. So we simply drop two lines, and we say play audio. And then now, let's run that again, let's make sure anything works. Make sure that if the script is totally right and you're totally sure you haven't made any mistakes, make sure the volume is up and if it's not, then head to the forms. Okay. Okay, it's still not playing. Let's just give it a second. Volume is still up. Let's just press F9. Oh yeah, we have an error. Sound ID isn't a valid member of workspace.soundsystem.sound1. So it could be that we've made a mistake with typing. Let's just check. The sound has been cloned. Hmm, let's see. How was it done? Sound ID. Ah, I accidentally didn't put a capital S. So let's head back to our script. It's going to load back. And then we're just going to say where it says game.workspace. Where is it? There it is. Audio instance dot sound ID, the S should be capital. I'm going to remove this sound instance as we don't need it. That was just a visual example. Then let's delete that. And now hopefully it works. Okay, everything works. That audio, yep. And now if we wait until this song ends, a new audio will play it again. Okay, so thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you have any issues with your script and you're 100% sure you followed this tutorial properly, head to our forms on forms.thecookie.dev. Linky will also be in the description down below. Thank you for tuning in. That's all from me, and bye bye.